Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare and sometimes self-care. So if that's your vibe, please consider hitting subscribe. And today I am talking about skincare marketing. I am one of those people who likes to think that the marketing doesn't work on them, <laughs> but that's just not the case, right? I mean, every single one of us who is here watching this video, marketing has worked on us at some point in time in some shape or form, right? Like marketing is really powerful, um, but that does doesn't mean that it's all true, right? Um, a lot of it is actually utter nonsense. And I really do think that the nonsense marketing kind of needs to be pointed out. And I don't want to point it out as in, let's call these brands out, let's cancel them. Let No, it's not about that. Actually, a lot of the examples are I'm going to use are from products I really enjoy using and brands that I do like, but that doesn't mean that their marketing isn't nonsense. And I want you to know about this because I truly believe that when we're able to see it for what it is, um, it just makes us smarter consumers. And that means that we're making smarter choices for ourselves, for the wallet, and also for the place planet. And that's why it's important for us to know about this. So if you're so ready to just find out my opinions about some nonsense marketing tactics in skincare, give the video a big thumbs up and let's get started. So the first nonsense marketing tactic that I can't stand is highlighting cool sounding ingredients that actually do nothing for your skin. And I do have two examples for you here. The first one is the Buy Wish Trend Hydra Ampule. Now I actually have not tried this product. It is on my wish list. I do want to put this onto my face, but let me tell you, I don't want to put it onto my face because of how they're marketing this. Because right on the front of the bottle, they're highlighting specific ingredients and certain benefits that you will get from this product. And one thing that it's putting front and center about this product is that it contains malachite extract. That sounds super duper cool. Like uh, malachite is a manifestation crystal. And as crystals become more and more popular and more mainstream, a lot more people are recognizing the name malachite. Um, and this is a green stone that is known for powerful manifestation benefits. This green stone is going to help you achieve and unlock all of your dreams. That's what malachite is supposed to do for you. Um, and so that it might have that name recognition like a positive association with people who might be familiar with crystals. Um, however, malachite doesn't do anything for your skin. It is not a proven skincare ingredient. It is classified as an antioxidant. I will give it that but it's not classified as a particularly potent antioxidant. I mean, malachite extract is not green tea, is not vitamin C. Malachite extract is not here to do something for your skin. It's here to actually do something for the product, for the formulation. And what malachite extract does is it imparts a really pretty aqua green blue tint to the skincare that it's in. It's actually like a natural dye for skincare. And that is something that I've noticed as a common theme throughout some of the products that are coming top to my mind that do contain malachite extract. Um, they do have this really refreshing, kind of relaxing looking aqua color. And that is what malachite extract is doing because nobody wants to see blue dye number one on the ingredients list of their skincare products, right? Nobody wants to see that. So malachite extract is a way to get dye dye, natural dye, a natural color into your skincare that makes it look really appealing without really having to say that we've dyed the skincare to make it look more appealing to you. Now, I'm not saying that this is shady. It's really not. I don't actually have a problem with malachite extract being used for that purpose for color. What I think is shady is putting it on the label as if it's doing something for your skin. And I'm actually seeing malachite extract being touted as doing stuff for your skin. And it doesn't, it is not a proven thing. This cannot be substantiated at all. I've seen nonsense like malachite extract detoxifies your skin. Okay, um, there are no toxins in your skin. Your skin is not toxic. It doesn't need to be detoxified. This is like health mumbo jumbo nonsense. So malachite extract probably a weak antioxidant, most likely being used in skincare for the beautiful color that it is, you know, giving to the formulation, but it's not doing anything for your skin. Using the name recognition of malachite to, you know, really kind of open up interpretation of the consumer, whatever they want to put on it, that it's a powerful manifestation skincare product. <laughs> 
or that it's it's an antioxidant that has health benefits for your skin it's detoxifying your skin it really does kind of like open the door to interpretation but at the end of the day malachite extract has not like shown any benefits for the skin outside of maybe a little bit of antioxidant protection so to me this is something that it should be taken with a grain of salt. It's a little bit of nonsense. Again, I still want to try this product, but I'm going to call the marketing out for what it is, which is nonsense. This is a hydrating ampule. There's probably tons of wonderful humectants in here that really probably deserve to be front and center on the label and not this nonsense ingredient that's just making your skincare blue. You know what I'm saying? Example number two of using a cool sounding ingredient that does nothing for your skin to market your skincare product is the Inky Lysucinic Acid Acne Treatment. I have I've talked about this before quite a bit actually and there's an excellent video from Michelle over at Lab Muffin Beauty Science who breaks this down from a chemist's perspective. I'm going to link that in the description box because it's a great video and it really elaborates on this issue but I do think it is worth talking about in this video because succinic acid is a nonsense ingredient. Actually it's an ingredient that has benefits for skincare formulation it's just not the way that you think it is. When this product first came out, I legit was like, succinic acid, is that like a brand new chemical exfoliant that Inky List has discovered? Or is like one of the first brands that they're using? Like, is this a brand new thing that is going to exfoliate my skin? Because it's an acne spot treatment, right? And they're using the word succinic acid. Acid makes us think of chemical exfoliation, like glycolic acid, lactic acid, right? Is that, you thinking the same thing as I am, right? At least that's where my mind was going. I was like, oh, succinic acid, this must be some novel chemical exfoliant. And that's exactly what Inky List wants you to think. They want you to think that this is a brand new thing that they have discovered, or again, they're the first ones who are using it, that this is breakthrough, you know what I mean? That this is brand new, nobody else is doing it, but they are one of the more progressive brands out there that are bringing you the newest, latest, best ingredients out there. Okay, succinic acid, not a chemical exfoliant not related to BHA, not related to AHA, doesn't have any acne benefits whatsoever. <laughs> this is actually an ingredient that has been used in skincare for a really long time because it's a buffering agent. A buffering agent, you may be asking, what the heck is that? A buffering agent just helps to set the pH of skincare. That's what succinic acid does. It keeps the pH at a good level, healthy, good for your skin. That's it. It doesn't exfoliate your skin. It doesn't go in there and root out the pimple. So it's really weird that they're putting it right on the bottle, right? And they're saying like, this is a super, and they are claiming this is a superstar um, acne treatment ingredient. And yet when you look at, if you don't even look at the marketing, but you just strictly look at the ingredients list, you'll see salicylic acid, legitimately a good exfoliant for acne, right? Super duper proven, boring as heck, but super duper proven. And sulfur, another ingredient we know is good for helping to treat breakouts. As much as I hate the name of this product, as much as I hate what this product is implying about itself, it works and I like it. <laughs> It works so good on my pimples. I actually just picked it up again the other day. I hadn't used it for many, many months and it like brought a pimple to a head that was like doing nothing. It was bothering me for like a week. It wouldn't come up to a head and it wouldn't flatten out. And like within hours, it made the pimple come up to a white head and I was able to drain it. And I was like, this product works so good, but I hate the name of it. And I hate how it's marketed. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, it's not about calling out products or whatever. It's just about knowing marketing tactics and being able to see beyond on them because this is still a good product they didn't have to do this tactic to sell the product it sells itself it works so good but in a really crowded landscape of so many different skincare brands and so many different launches happening almost daily you do need to do something to stand out unfortunately and that's where we get nonsense like this Marketing tactic number two that I want to talk about is using super high percentages because bigger is not better. More is not necessarily more. And I think niacinamide is a really great example of this because niacinamide at 2% is extremely effective. It doesn't sound like a high amount. 2% sounds really dinky, right? But it actually is really effective at brightening your skin and helping to support your skin's moisture barrier just at 2%.
at 5%, it's really effective for doing that and stimulating collagen on your skin and bringing all those well aging benefits. So why in the world are there 20% niacinamide products, 10% niacinamide products, 15% niacinamide products? Why? 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 You got to ask yourself this too, especially when you start to look at the fact that like niacinamide um, over 5% isn't even used in studies. They don't even look at it because you get so many benefits at 2 and 5%. There's no point to go higher. And once you start going higher, you're not getting more benefits, but you might be getting more potential irritation. Skincare ingredients are studied rigorously and they are recommended to be used in certain concentrations for a reason. And it really comes down to safety, you know, because a little bit of something can be good. A lot of something can actually be really bad for you, right? There's always that fine line. And the concentrations that are recommended for use in skincare are, have been tested. They've been tested for safety. But when we start to use marketing to make our products stand out, because as I mentioned earlier, this is a very crowded space. And if you want your products to succeed and your business to succeed and to get sales, you really do need to stand out in a very crowded landscape. And so if everybody's selling a 5% niacinamide product, you can kind of capitalize on people thinking bigger is better by making a 10% niacinamide serum or maybe a 15 or 20% one, right? That makes you stand out from everybody else. Um, um, and it makes your product a little bit different, but it starts to drive the demand from consumers. Like, okay, bigger is better. So this, this product's better. So they're doing 20% nice in my, why isn't anybody else doing 20% nice in my, and then it might make other people do it too. And we start to drive more and more and higher and higher and bigger and bigger. And like I said, 5% is what studied that's what's shown to be effective there's really no reason to go beyond that and when you go beyond that you start to push the limits of safety to push the limits of irritation right to, to potentially push your skin and when the consumer is demanding it because the marketing is nonsense to begin with <laughs> it's starting to push other brands to do the same to get the same kinds of sales and attention and so i think that this is not a good trend in skincare and it's I don't want to say like it's nobody's fault like obviously you know it's marketing's fault but it's like it's not the consumer's fault for thinking bigger is better we shouldn't be expected to know every single study out there about niacinamide we shouldn't be expected to know this <laughs> speaking of michelle at lab muffin beauty science i'm going to recommend another video where she talks about the ordinary's 100 vitamin c powder and she really does touch on this whole phenomenon of percentage chasing and why she actually thinks that, that particular product is unsafe um, because of the whole percentage chasing. And I think that that's a great um, companion to, to this video to check that one out if you're interested to learn more about this particular topic because I do think that actually at some point it is going to become unsafe and it is going to be bad for us in the long run. Nonsense marketing tactic number three is fragrance apologies. Now the fragrance free revolution has really taken over the skincare world in the last couple of years, right? A lot of products are marketing themselves as being fragrance free and I think that that's not a bad thing I am somebody who mostly uses fragrance free skincare products and it's not because I believe that fragrance is evil toxic or harmful to the skin not at all I have sensitive skin and so I avoid artificial fragrance um, because it might have some potential triggers for my sensitive skin I definitely do avoid essential oils because I do have a, a sensitivity to them but I'm not against it in skincare products. It's just those products are not for my individual skin. However, there are actually a lot of people out there preaching that fragrance is evil, harmful, and toxic to your skin. That's not true. Um, that's complete and utter BS. If people want fragrance in their skincare, leave them alone. Let them have their fragrance. There's room for everybody here. I mean, I just told you that like skincare is so competitive. There are so many brands, there are so many products. We can have fragrance-free brands and we can have fragrance brands. Not everybody needs to be the same, right? And there's nothing wrong with enjoying some fragrance in your skincare products. But as the fragrance-free revolution becomes more trendy, I'm seeing brands like apologize for the fragrance that they are using in their products. And it's like, there's nothing wrong with fragrance. If you're a brand that uses fragrance, it's cool. There's plenty of other brands that can offer fragrance free options, but I'm seeing it. Um, I'm seeing brands kind of like slipping fragrance in there, like 
they're just like putting it in the ingredients list and trying to hope that you don't see it or they're like making up nonsense terms for their fragrance the Cetaphil daily cleanser um, this was actually sent to me by the brand they sent me actually quite a bit of their products and for the most part I have enjoyed them and um, most of them are fragrance free but this particular cleanser does have fragrance in it so when I was looking at the ingredients list I noticed fragrance but I noticed it listed in a way I had not seen it listed before and I don't know if this is a new thing or if this is a Cetaphil thing or what but they put it on the ingredients list as masking fragrance and I was like oh masking fragrance so they've only used fragrance to mask something in this formula that is not pleasant to smell maybe this was just my error but I was just assuming that it was gonna be a very light smell holy moly I was so wrong this is so perfumed wow this is a very very strongly scented cleanser and in my mind this is not masking fragrance this is full-on perfume <laughs> and that's fine it's not for me it's not something that i personally enjoy in skincare but it's fine you know what i mean it's fine for cetaphil to just say that they used fragrance that this is a pleasant smelling fragranced cleanser there's nothing wrong with that i just feel like they were apologizing for using so much fragrance in their in their cleanser and so they were trying to like push it off like well but it's only there to mask things i just think it's tricky you know what i'm saying like i don't have a problem with fragrance use it it's cool like i know people really enjoy it and it's important to them and i want them to have that skincare i want that to exist for them I don't want there to be this world where like everything has to be fragrance free and if it, it does have fragrance it has to have some kind of explanation you don't need an explanation for liking fragrance in your products or using them in your products stop confusing people stop confusing the matter stop tricking us stop endorsing that fragrance is bad it's fine and stop apologizing for it and nonsense marketing tactic number four is greenwashing now you're probably aware of this this is probably the one that i see the most right now it's very very popular it's being used not just in skincare but like in every product that is being sold to us what i don't like about this is i really feel like it's quite insidious to turn that fear and concern that we all have about the environment against us in order to sell products you know like i say you know buy this product because it's more friendly for the environment that to me is quite insidious and i have to say i have really complicated thoughts about this because on the one hand i actually think that highlighting certain eco-friendly um, things about a product is actually a good thing um because i do see there is change happening in the industry specifically around packaging which i do think is an important area to address about you know really figuring out how can we make more sustainable choices in skincare packaging from you know reusable renewable resources to make new skincare packaging to the ways that we can recycle that that material longer we can kind of close the loop a little bit more and not using like single use plastics that i think is actually really important and i do see brands working Working on that and kind of experimenting to varying degrees of success but I do want to commend them for trying because we do have to try I think that that's a good thing and I don't think it's bad for them to make that known to the consumer so that's why I'm saying my feelings on this are quite complicated because on one hand I do think that like when brands are experimenting with packaging it's going to like inspire other brands to do it right you know what i'm saying like i think it's going to inspire change and the more brands that are doing it and especially the bigger brands associated with large corporations with tons and tons of money when they start to do it right when they see what the little guys are doing and they see that that's popular and that people are buying those types of products because of that specific reason the bigger ones start to do it and this is really important because this is where change actually happens and this is kind of my issue with the whole greenwashing thing to begin with so often the responsibility of making environmentally like good choices is pushed onto the consumer it's on us we need to recycle you know we have to make sure that what we're doing is that we're recycling it that we're cleaning out the products properly that we're putting it in the right bins that we're making the right purchasing decisions that we're composting that we're doing all of this when the biggest offender to the environment is large corporations right what we do in one day versus what they do in one day they have a much bigger impact on the environment than we could right and so the change yes individual changes do add up i do believe that like we need to make good choices i really do 
They need to make good choices though for there to be meaningful change and impact, positive impact on the environment corporations need to change. If we're coming back down to marketing, I do see, like I said, I think it's insidious to turn that against the consumer because first of all, corporations are the bigger offenders, not us, first of all. So stop trying to put the guilt onto us to make better choices for the environment when you're the ones polluting it way more than I ever could in a lifetime, right? And second of all, they're pushing that fear back against us and saying, buy our products because you're gonna feel good because you're making a good choice for the environment. You're going to feel like you did something right. But we know at the heart of everything when it comes to the environment and making better choices and treading on this earth a little bit more gently at the core of it, right? We know that buying stuff is a problem. We know that over consuming things is the problem. Buying something is never going to be an environmentally like positive choice, right? Consuming something, the most like environmentally friendly choice you can make is to not actually buy anything, right? And I don't want you to go super extreme and be like zero waste and not buying anything. And I think that that's pretty stressful for most people. But what I really want to inspire is just for people to use only what they need, what they'll use and what they'll appreciate. And when you're constantly marketing so much skincare on the basis of a, a good choice that you're making for the environment, something to make you feel good as a consumer and make you feel good about the environment, I do think that it leads to overconsumption. We need to confront that a little bit. We need to not fall for that as easily. And we just need to know that like we have to consume in a smarter way. We have to be more responsible consumers. And that does mean kind of taking a look at some of this marketing and calling it out for what it is. And I said, I have complicated feelings about this because I do consume a lot of skincare. My job inherently means I'm consuming a lot of skincare, but I like to think, and I like to make it my mission on this channel that I'm helping you navigate all of this nonsense because it is overwhelming. There is so much out there. Like I said, this is a very crowded industry right now. I would like to think that me trying all this stuff actually helps you make the choices to find the skincare that you're going to use, appreciate, and love so that you are not over consuming, so that you are not going out and buying a bunch of useless products because the marketing lured you in, but it's not right for your skin. So that's my mission on this channel. You know, my mission is not to show you every latest, newest, greatest product and I'll buy all these things all the time. I get excited about skincare. It is a hobby. I do use a lot of it, absolutely. But at the end of it, I really just want to help you just consume those products that are more than likely going to be amazing for your individual skin. That's what my reviews are about. That's what my channel is about. Whether something is being marketed on a fad like ingredient, if it's being marketed on like a trendy movement, like, you know, fragrance free or something, I just want you to look beyond that label. I want you to look beyond the marketing copy. Um, and I want you to be a little bit smarter in navigating this world because there is so much nonsense out there. There are so many great products but there is so much nonsense and I think that knowledge is power and when we have that knowledge behind us we just make better choices naturally Ooh, okay I honestly I got a little bit more passionate about that than I, I kind of originally thought I was when I was thinking about recording this video but clearly I had some things to get off of my chest. Now, I wanna hear from you. Is there some marketing nonsense out there that really drives you nuts? Let us know in the comment box below. If you like this video, if it helped you think about skincare in a slightly different way, but you have not hit subscribe, please, I would be so honored if you would subscribe to my channel. I release a lot of new skincare content throughout the week, so do consider turning on notifications too. I hope you are healthy, happy, and safe, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.